Has any U.S. presidential election had so many saying, I cannot wait until this is over? By its end, the 2024 campaign has become a wholly negative event, devoid of substance and descending into non-stop ad hominem attacks. Do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. According to Democrats, Trump is a fascist, a Hitler admirer, a dictator from day one. And Mr. Trump's description of Kamala Harris? I'm competing against this stupid person. Does she drink? Is she on drugs? I don't know. One institution that should feel insulted by this bottom-of-the-barrel campaign is the American voter, with those supporting Mr. Trump a case study in mass political denigration. Trump is garbage! Trump is garbage! Take, for example, reaction to this unfunny joke by comedian Tony Hinchcliffe at Mr. Trump's Madison Square Garden rally. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Political commentators and many others make the fallacy of thinking that because they believe Donald Trump is self-evidently a fascist, everyone else obviously should. Everybody good? Everybody good? In 2020, some 74 million people voted for Mr. Trump, and about as many will again. That's millions of Americans. Many may think Mr. Trump is a character-challenged jerk, But even so, many of those millions don't vote for a presidential candidate based merely on personality, but after a complex calculation of how a candidate will help or harm their own interests and beliefs. Largely forgotten but impossible to take off the election table is the reality of Kamala Harris's ascendancy. We need Kamala Harris, the president of Georgia. The only reason Ms. Harris is the Democratic candidate is that the Biden family and his White House aides irresponsibly let him hang on to the presidency until mid-July, rather than allow the party to conduct a competitive succession. Today, she benefits from the country's 50-50 polarization and Mr. Trump's revelry in his anti-politic personality. But the moment I started thinking Ms. Harris was not going to win was during Barack Obama's stemwinder speech prior to her appearance in Georgia. Just because he acts goofy does not mean his presidency wouldn't be dangerous. Then came Ms. Harris, whose OK turn on stage forced the conclusion that she just doesn't have the special magic needed to be a successful presidential candidate. Make no mistake, we will win. Kamala Harris has a significant enthusiasm gap, thus the campaign's need to compensate with a parade of household name celebrities. Bruce Springsteen, Usher, Lizzo, Tyler Perry, Michelle Obama, even Beyonce. I'm here as a mother. A mother who cares deeply about the world my children and all of our children live in. Right behind, I can't wait till it's over, the election's most memorable catchphrase is, one of them has to lose. I think Ms. Harris is on pace to lose the election. The main reason, predicted from day one, is the economy. Household prices went high in 2021, and many have stayed high. For an incumbent, that's fatal. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Still a caveat. The phenomenon known as Trump derangement syndrome is real, but it may have a successor, Trump exhaustion syndrome. If so, he loses. We're going to make it affordable again. Regardless of the winner, this election has produced an emerging political reality. The country is moving to the right, or at least center-right, and is likely to stay there. I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman sitting at the table wearing a blue suit. And that, in part, is because the highly politicized idea of wokeness is in decline, a victim of its own overreaching demands on equity, gender, and climate. It's a reversal that has many moments, but recall this one. The answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct, correct? Again, it depends on the context. After anti-Semitic eruptions occurred last year at U.S. campuses, three university presidents testified to Congress. It was a time for decisive action, for an assertion of leadership. I've heard chants which 
can be anti-Semitic depending on the context. It is a context-dependent decision. Two of them lost their jobs. He's becoming increasingly unstable and unhinged. Every time she speaks, Kamala Harris sounds like a university president. She's context-dependent. Expect the same result.